Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is VK Arora. I represent a company based out of Calcutta, the Thapar Group. We were at one time the third largest producer of coal in the country, uh, the largest producer of coking coal, and the largest producer of underground coal at one time. And subsequently, after the nationalization of coal, we diversified into handling of coal on a long-term basis. We now take care of the logistics of uh, moving almost about 60 million tons of coal on behalf of the various consumers like power plants and, uh, and steel plants and uh, the cement plants, etc. So we've been doing this job on a, on a fairly consistent scale for a very long time. Now, procurement of coal is the subject for this session, but I thought 40% of the cost, the landed price of coal, is today on account of the logistics, and that is the subject. The price of coal is fixed by Coal India. You cannot do much about it, but what you can do is to look at the logistic cost so that if you can reduce your cost, it could perhaps be more advantageous to you. So logistics of coal movement is the subject on, I'm going to be talking to you. No. A World Bank study has indicated that Indian logistic cost is one of the highest in the world. In developed countries, the costs are 6 to 8 percent. China, it is 10 percent. And India, it is 14 percent. The freight cost of rail and road are quite high here. However, in the case of coal, the railway freight is varying from 35 to 40 percent of the landed price for a distance of about 1,000 kilometer. Now, we have to look at what are the alternatives available to us. Recently, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, the Minister of Road and Shipping, had compared the cost of movement of goods through rail, road, and inland waterways as follows. In the case of rail, the cost of moving goods is about rupees 1 to 1.20 per kilometer. In the case of road, it is rupees 2 to 2.20 per kilometer. And waterways, surprisingly, the best cost is rupees 0 0.20 per kilometer. So you can see the inland waterway is probably the cheapest mode of transport here. According to a shipping ministry document, one horsepower can move 150 kg on, on road and 500 kgs on rail and as much as 4,000 kgs on waterways. That's the kind of efficiency you can achieve. Similarly, one liter of fuel can move 24 tons per kilometer on road, 85 tons on rail, and 105 tons per kilometer on waterways. No challenges for us. Poor infrastructure is the biggest challenge being faced by Indian companies. Problems are, we all know, bad roads, poor connectivity, poor seaport capabilities, inadequate rail transport capacity, and non-development of alternatives like inland waterways. However, for cost-effective management of goods, we have to marry the different modes of transport in a seamless transition so that our effective cost of moving the goods is the lowest. Now, what about the road network in this country? The road network transports more than 65% of all goods and 85% of all passenger traffic as of today. The figures have been increasing with increasing connectivity between cities, towns, and villages. There's always a competition between rail and road traffic. Railways is gen gradually losing its share to road because investment in the road has been much more than the corresponding investment in the railways in the recent past. In 1951, Railways share used to be 65% and roadways share was 35%. Now, railways share is 30% and 
and road share is 70%. Now we are talking about the transport of bulk commodities by rail. Shorter distance of transport, say about 400 kilometers, road transport is a viable alternative. In one of the studies made recently in case of coal, it was seen that the amount of energy spent in carting truckload of coal over a distance of 500 kilometer is more than the energy you carry in that truck. For longer distance, rail is definitely cheaper. Rail freight for distances above 800 kilometer is 60% less than that of the road transport. Now today, for an average consumer, average distance of the cargo by rail is about 600 kilometers. Any hike in the freight cost cuts into the share of the high-rate goods traffic. The freight is perennially going up every year, whereas because of the lowering of the cost of the diesel in the recent past, the cost of transportation by road has been within the limits. Now, coal freight, as we all know, is today heavily subsidizing passenger fare. In case of power, the government has fixed a limit with not more than 15% of the transmission loss can be passed on to the consumer. This is a change which has come in recently. Similarly, center has directed that cross-subsidy for domestic use of power or for farming does not go beyond 20%. No, if such limitations have been imposed in the power sector, why not impose a ceiling for the railway freight so that the freight is not required to subsidize passenger fare beyond a certain limit? We know that the freight has to subsidize passenger fare, but it should be done within a certain limit so that we do not end up carrying all the load on our shoulders. Mr. Bhatia, it's a point which you may like to carry to your railway board because that is what the people feel about it. Yeah. What is the future of goods traffic in India is going to be affected, though this is going to be affected by the following factors. No huge investment in the road infrastructure, 20 to 25 kilometers of new roads to be completed every day. The figure we understand now is going to go up to 40 to 45 kilometers every day. Dedicated freight corridors, that's something when it comes would revolutionize the movement of bulk commodity by rail. Coastal and inland movement will increase in volumes because of huge investment in ports and canals. Sagarmala project is one example. While parallel development of each of the avenues is important, it is important to have a seamless transition from one source to another. This would result in lowering the cost of transportation, thus helping the industry in due course. Now, the another thing which is now catching the fancy of uh, movement of goods beyond a certain distance along the east coast is the coastal movement. Now, coastal movement of coal from Haldia, Talcher, and Vizag, Paradeep to Krishna Patnam and Noor and others is growing by substantial numbers every year. People are investing in huge port capacities and rapid loading and unloading systems to load and unload 20,000 tons per hour. Coastal movement shall now be the preferred means of transport for coal for years to come. But high charges levied by TAMP, that is the port charges which are fixed by the central authority there, TAMP, vis-a-vis -vis the lower charges by private ports have rendered idle some of the private berths in the major port. See, the, the private ports don't have to command the prices given by the TAMP. It is only the major ports which have to be dictated by the TAMP. So there's a disparity in the prices being charged by the major ports and the minor port, and that is, that is responsible for the anomaly. Waterways, 
Apart from this, there's the Sagar Mala project, which the government is pushing to develop and promote the use of waterways for carriage of coal from the mines to the ports. A start has already been made in the case of imported coal coming to Faraka by sea come river route. The government is going to push with this with all the seriousness as the movement of coal by inland waterways is by far the cheapest mode of transport. The coal is already coming to Faraka first by imported coal coming to uh, somewhere around Sagar Island and that's where it's unloaded into a mothership and from there it is carried by barges all the way to Faraka. And ultimately this is going to be extended up to Magad and Bard. Bard, Bard is the place which is about very close to Patna. The center is expected to spend about rupees 12,000 crores for the first phase of the Sagarmala project and 5,000 crores in the next five years for setting up 10 coastal economic regions around cluster of ports. Project is aimed at expanding ports, promoting port-led port development in coastal economic regions, boosting coastal shipping and inland waterways, string them all with the coastal road road and rail traffic. Now the alternate logistics. Inland water transport, as we said, is another promising alternative means of transportation which can be integrated with coastal movement. The movement for Faraka has already started. It is expected to go up to Kahalgaon and then to NTPC Bird in Patna. The dredging in the river Hooghly or the Ganges is already started and it is expected that in the next uh, two years, quite a bit of progress is going to be made there. For smooth transfer of goods from one mode of transport to another, integration points are being developed, having facilities for permanent berths, storage, stacking yards, etc., at different places already identified for this purpose. Now, what is the future of Indian coal logistics? Up to 200 kilometer movement by road may be the preferred means of transport provided enough infrastructure and capacity is available for the roads to take on this extra load. Railway freight is presently substantially subsidizing the passenger fares. Loading all increases on the freight may not be the best solution. We would like to see leaner railway freights in times to come. Inland waterways transport can drastically bring in reduction of cost provided the planned investment in infrastructure is made in the next few years. Barges carrying coal in the major rivers would be as common a sight as seen in the river Rhine in Germany and Mississippi in US. So with these words, thank you very much.